Joe here. Welcome to this preview video. Today we'll be taking a look at Freedom. This is an upcoming Kickstarter campaign to be published by Phalanx Games, designed by Vangelis Bagiartakis. And this is a two-player card-driven game about the third siege of Mesolonghi during the Greek War of Independence from 1825 to 1826, where the Greeks are fighting the Ottoman Empire for independence. Now, this is a game that has some uh, Euro game mechanics, but it is definitely a war game. So let's take a look at the components and how the game plays. The game includes a 21 and a half by 21 and a half inch mounted map board. The southern half of the map board depicts the city of Mesolonghi, and it is divided in areas. And protecting the city of Mesolonghi is a wall where the military units of the Greeks, represented by the blue cubes, begin the game. Interspersed along the wall are four fort spaces, which are crucial for the Greeks. If they lose any of those fort spaces, they lose the game. And protecting the city, the Greeks are also protecting civilians, and the civilians are represented by these white cubes. Eight of them begin in the city space in Mesolonghi. Uh, there's uh, an action by which the Greek player can convert civilian cubes into military units. Also shown on the map are three islands controlled by the Greeks. Uh, and you see one island there, that's Marmaru. Then there's here Vasiladi. And on the southeastern part of the map, we have the remaining island, which is Klisova. The Ottomans start with a massive army, uh, 30 cubes in red, which represents the expeditionary force, and also two black cubes. Black cubes in this game represent cannons, and the Greeks and the Ottomans have cannons at the beginning of the game. The Greeks have a very powerful cannon unit you see there in purple, which is called the Bombard. The starting Ottoman units, 30 of them, start on the two outer rows of this map, as you see here. And in addition, the Ottomans have a triangular shaped space, which represents the uh, army's camp where they have five additional expeditionary units and another cannon. So the southern part of the map represents the city of Mesolonghi and is divided by spaces. It shows the walls and the uh, areas right in front of the walls. But the northern part of the map uh, represents the war, the Greek War of Independence, in an abstract way. And uh, the consequences of what happens on this part of the map will be obviously felt in the southern map where the siege is taking place. And as you can see here, uh, this part of the board shows Mesolonghi in a red rectangle and its surrounding areas. And there's rectangular types of tiles which represent control of the areas. Those red represent Ottoman control, those in blue controlled by the Greeks. And at the beginning of the game, each side controls four areas. So uh, because this is a siege game, it is important for the Ottomans to try to cut supplies to the city in order to facilitate its capture, but that is easier said than done. This is a card-driven game. Cards can be played 
to affect this part of the map board in order to try to obtain control of the areas under the control of the opponent. And each one of these specific areas provides certain benefits. As you see here, that red area in control of the Ottomans, Guria, has a bread uh, loaf symbol, that is a supply symbol. So it provides each turn, it is under Ottoman control, one supply point to the Ottomans. And you see the, the same thing happens with the area to its left, which is under Greek control. But other areas, like the one to the right, provides one point of morale, in this case to the Greeks, represented by the heart symbol. Other areas even provide uh, reinforcements or cubes. As you see here, this area provides one cube of uh, military forces for the Greeks. Each turn it is under their control, and so forth. In addition, one of the most important areas is the one that represents the sea that surrounds Mesolonghi. Mesolonghi was surrounded by sea on one side and a lagoon on the other. And you can see here that it is a an essential source of supply for the Greeks, providing two points of supply each turn. The board also includes a series of tracks to keep track of important game information. Uh, for the Greeks, for example, uh, there's this population track, which uh, you must adjust turn by turn, checking how many civilian military units you have. You place the marker in the corresponding box, and that's the number of supply points that will be consumed in that turn. And at the beginning of the game, the Greeks have eight civilian cubes and 12 uh, army cubes, or military uh, units, for a total of 20 population points. Therefore, the marker starts in the 16 to 20 population point space, meaning that at the end of the turn, four supply points will be used by the Greeks. And the Greeks start the game with 10 supply points. The Greeks also keep track of action points used to increase the die roll for a plea for help from their central government, and they can uh, receive help only once per game if they succeed on a particular die roll. And if they do receive help, they receive two units, uh, six supplies, and morale is increased by two points. Now, morale is an essential uh, facet of this game. If morale drops to zero for any of the sides at the end of the turn, that side loses the game. For the Greeks, it starts at level 10. There's one more track here, which is used uh, to keep track of action points which are played for preparation. In this game, you can save action points to be used later, but only for certain specific actions. And the Ottoman side has the same tracks as we saw before, with the exception of population points. They don't keep track of population points, but there is a track to keep track of morale points. And the Ottoman morale starts higher than Greek morale at the beginning of the game, starts at 15. However, if morale should fall to uh, very low levels, like shown here, there's going to be some dire effects on uh, the Ottoman player's side. And that is the uh, Ottoman player will suffer from desertion. For example, if morale falls to 4, he is going to lose one unit to desertion that turn. If it's three, he loses two, and so forth. The Ottomans start with ten supply points, as shown there by the bread loaf symbols, and ten money points. The Ottoman has to deduct four money points at the end of each round during rounds one to three, and six money points during rounds four to six. And in case the uh, Ottomans don't have enough money for each one they cannot pay, they have to remove one of their units from the map. Also, supply is expended each turn during uh, turns one to three. The Ottomans have to spend 
eight supply points and 12 during turns four through six. And if uh, he doesn't have enough supply points, then morale is reduced by one for each point that cannot be fulfilled. And the same effect happens on the Greek side. If the Greeks cannot pay for their supply demands, for each point of supply that isn't paid, morale is also reduced by one. And again, if morale reaches zero at the end of a round, that side loses the game. Another way that the Ottomans can win is if they capture one of the four forts that are, that are located along the wall that protects Mesolonghi. Each one of these forts contains at the beginning of the game one unit and one cannon. Cannons fire in an independent phase in this game. And there's a special cannon, the Bombard, that has a bonus when it does so. So there's four fort spaces there that have to be protected by the Greeks or they lose the game. But in addition to those four spaces, Another way that the Ottomans win is if they capture one of the five spaces to the south of the city of Mesolonghi, as shown here. And those five spaces begin unoccupied. So, to recap, the Ottomans win if they reduce Greek morale to zero, or if they capture either one of the fort spaces along the wall, or one of the five spaces to the south of Mesolonghi. On the other hand, the Greeks win if uh, Ottoman morale drops to zero or the Ottomans fail to achieve any of their other victory conditions. Freedom is a card-driven game. As stated before, the game consists of six turns divided in two epochs. Epoch A, the early epoch, is called the Dawn of Freedom and you use the Dawn of Freedom deck, 50 cards. And then when the game progresses into turn four, uh, we use the Twilight of Freedom cards. The cards in this game have a typical layout of CDGs. At the left corner is a number, which is the number of action points that the card provides if the card is played for actions. And if it has a red flag behind it, it means that the event, in this case, for example, Conturioti's Indifference, can only be played by the Ottoman player. Similarly here we see a card uh, that provides two action points and can be played by any player for the action points or only by the Greek player for its event. And some cards show a flag with gray color. That means this is a neutral event and the event can be played by either player. Okay, to finish setup, we deal eight cards to each of the sides. And we are ready to go. What I will do is I will play turn one off camera in order to uh, make some of the units of the Ottomans approach the wall so that in turn two we can show some combat. And we will show turn two in full in the video. Okay, we just completed the first turn off camera, and this is the situation on the southern part of the board, where we have the city and uh, the expeditionary Ottoman army attacking. <clears throat> on the uh, left side here of the screen, you see that the Ottomans advanced, and the Ottomans took some losses from the cannons. There's one phase in this game where both players fire their cannons and uh, in this game the effectiveness of cannons is uh, depending on the range. They can fire up the three spaces away in which case they need sixes to hit. If they spot, fire two spaces away five or six is hit and if they fire to any unit adjacent four or more uh, hits on six-sided dice and uh, the Ottomans had the misfortune of uh, uh, suffering uh, attacks by two cannons and you roll two dice and it was four sixes total so four units were eliminated. Here we see the surrounding areas map. We saw some cards being played to uh, increase the support for each one of the sides there and, and at the same time reduce the support of the other side but we didn't see any areas changing control so 
Uh, still, both sides, each of the sides controls four of the areas. And some of the areas are very important. For example, this area to the north of Mesolonghi, which is Saigos, in control of the Greeks, provides one Greek army unit per turn. So that's a way in which they can get reinforcements. Of course, the, the Ottomans have very powerful uh, reinforcements coming up each turn. As you see there from these uh, two tiles, they would get a uh, total of uh, three tiles, actually. They would get two uh, army pieces and uh, one cannon. So they will be getting those reinforcements for now. You don't see... Uh, we don't see the Greeks having enough resources to change the control of those areas there. Meanwhile, the sea area, we saw in the first turn uh, some changes in the support. At the beginning of the game, what the tile indicates is the number of support markers you place on top. So, at the beginning of the game, the sea area starts in Greek control with two support markers, and the Greeks were able to reinforce that with an additional support mark. So we begin turn or round number two with the administration phase. And we start by moving the round marker from the number one round box to the box for round number two. Now each side draws seven new cards. And after dealing the cards, the administration phase is over. We go to the next phase, which is the opening phase. Here, the uh, Ottomans conduct what is called advancement. So they can move five units from a particular row forward one space. And after that, the Greeks can conduct a regroup action. So the uh, Ottomans will move five units from the uh, row that is marked row number six, which is the next to last row. And these five units will move one space forward. And that completes the advancement for the Ottomans. So now the Greeks can conduct a regroup action, which is simply moving one of their units from anywhere inside the city or on an island to another space on another island or inside the city. We've seen that the attack apparently is developing on the Greek left here and uh, the Greeks have been able to move one unit that was previously recruited from civilian status and there's two units in that wall space and it, what what's important here is that cannons to be able to fire there has to be a unit in the same space. So if the cannons are alone in a space, they can't fire. So it's worthwhile to beef up this area. And what the Greeks will do is that this unit will be regrouped from here. It will move to reinforce this uh, fort space with the cannon here. So uh, we have now two Greek units in that space and the maximum capacity for spaces uh, with wall, wall spaces is two units so they're at the max there and that was the regroup action. Now play proceeds to the actions phase where uh, each side alternates playing cards, conducting actions, events and the side with the highest morale goes first. And we see that Ottoman morale is at 14 well, Greek morale is at 11, so the Ottomans go first. Here we see the Ottoman hand. Only one red card with uh, an Ottoman event. So that's not very encouraging. Uh, two neutral cards. And the rest, five blue cards, meaning that the Ottomans can only play these cards for the action points. And this game has a particular mechanic that if a player plays a card for its action points and that card has an event for the opposing player during the next uh, step for the opposing player uh, that player may uh, 
discard one of his cards to trigger the event of the card played by the opposing player. So that's a very interesting mechanic because uh, you got to be careful when you play cards that have uh, an unf unfavorable events. So these are the eight cards on the Ottoman side. So the Ottomans will play this card, Reinforcements, for its event, and they add one support in two areas. So when you add a support in an area that is under the control of the opposing player, uh, you subtract or remove one of their support markers. So with that in mind, the uh, Ottomans will place a support in the C area, and that removes one of the Greeks' support markers, and they have two left. And the Ottomans will add another support to Guria, which is an area under their control now. There's two support markers there. So now it's the insurgents' turn. They have eight cards, of which four are blue, three red, and one gray, as we see here. And the Greeks play this card, Fire Ships in Methoni, for the event. So. Uh, the Ottomans lose three supply points. And the Ottomans have 13 supply points, so uh, we'll take away three, and they have 10 remaining. So now it's the Ottomans' turn, and they wish to place uh, cannons near the wall because they become more effective if placed near the wall. Now, in this game, cannons can't move, and to place a cannon in a space, there must be a, a unit there. So they can't place any cannon in this row adjacent to the wall. Now, if they wanted and they qualified to do so, that would cost seven action points. Now, to place a cannon in this row, which is two spaces away from the wall, that costs five action points. And to place it in the third row, it costs three action points. So... Um, the problem that the Ottomans have is that they want to place a cannon, let's say, here or here. So they would have to spend five action points, but the cards only reach four action points. Now, in the previous turn, the um, Ottomans conducted a preparation action, which is playing a card for its action points and saving them all here. So they save three action points. So now they only need two action points to place a cannon in the row that is two spaces away from the wall. So the Ottomans play this card, Sacred City, for its action points because it is a blue event card. And uh, with those two action points, they'll be able to uh, place a cannon from their camp to that space, uh, two uh, spaces away from the wall. And the Ottomans spend those three points they had in reserve. So he put the marker back to zero. Now, in this game, by playing a card for its action points, a card which has an event that is playable by the other player in the next step, when the, it's the Greeks' a turn to play a card, they may discard any card from their hand to trigger that event but if they choose not to do so, they can't come back and, and do it on a further step. So it's a one-shot deal. So the Ottomans will place a cannon here in this space. And what you do is you take a cannon from the uh, camp. And the Ottomans have two cannons there. And you place the cannon in that space. So here it is. And now... The Ottomans have a cannon two spaces away from the Greeks' wall. Now it's the uh, Greeks' turn, and going back to the previously played card, they can play any card from their hand, or they can discard a card to play this event, Sacred City, which would increase by one the track of a plea for help from the government. And the Greeks play this card, Racial Disputes, but they will play it for the action points. Note that the event says that uh, the Greeks can choose up to two Imperial units in different spaces on the first row from the wall and return it to the camp, but there's no 
Imperial units on the first row, that is the row adjacent to the wall. So they will play the card for its two action points. And with two action points, the uh, insurgents will conduct a raid. And they will raid this space. And the way that is done is uh, you count the number of spaces from a wall space with a unit, which is here, two spaces. And that's the cost of the raid. Two action points, which were just paid for. To resolve the raid, the insurgent uh, player rolls one eight-sided die and five or more is needed to cause a hit and a hit removes an enemy unit so we roll 1d8 and the result is a three so no casualties occurred and that's the end of that raid now the ottomans play this card chieftains defect but they play the card not for the event even though it's an event favorable to the ottomans they'll play it for the action points three action points and the ottomans will spend the action points to move a unit or various units and uh, note that in this game action points uh, one action point can be spent to move a unit another action point for something else so you don't have to use all your action points for the same action for each action point, you can move one unit two spaces, or two units one space. And the Ottomans will select these two units. Each one will move two spaces, one here and one here, so that will consume two of the three action points. And the last action point will be used to move this sole unit two spaces to the space where there's a unit and a cannon. A word about leaving units alone in a space. In this game, it's not a good idea to leave us many spaces with just one unit. Why? Because if that last unit is eliminated either by cannon or by an enemy attack, the enemy gains either one morale point or can uh, subtract one morale point from the losing side. And in that equation, cannons, cannons are not counted as units. So uh, it's always good to have some company in more than one unit in each space. So it's uh, the Greeks' turn, and uh, they're facing a considerable number of forces here on what is their left flank. And they may expect an attack soon. Uh, but to attack, the Ottomans have to move into the spaces adjacent to the wall. So the insurgents play this card, Georgios Skitsos, for its event. It is a blue event. So they gain one morale and receive one insurgent unit. So morale, which is at 11, is now increased to 12. And they receive one unit which can be placed in any space inside the city or at any island. And expecting an attack now from this uh, left side, they will place the unit here to beef up the defenses. And remember that on wall spaces, it's a maximum of two units and cannons don't count. So now it's the Ottomans' turn. And they'll play this card, Defector's Return, which is a Greek event for the action points, with the caveat that the Greeks will have an opportunity in their next step to, by discarding a card, playing that event. So three action points for the Ottomans. And with three action points, the Ottomans are going to advance forward some units in order to attack the wall before the uh, Greeks can continue beefing up the defenses. So for each action point, the Ottomans can move either one unit, two spaces, or two units, one space. So the first action point is used to move these two units into this space. So that's one action point. They still have two left. The next action point, again, these two units now move here, one space each. And the Ottomans have spent two of their three action points. They have one action point left. And with their last action point, they will move two units to this space 
here. And that concludes the move actions undertaken with this card. Now it's the Greeks turn. They have uh, four cards left. Three of them are red events. So this time they'll play the blue card for the event. And this is Kitai's Retreat. Kutai's Retreat. Choose six spaces in the mainland area and move one Imperial unit in each of, the, of those spaces one space backward. So uh, the Greeks will choose first these three spaces and move one unit one space backward. Now there's three more spaces to choose from and this time it will be these three spaces here. One unit will move back in each. So now it's the Ottomans turn. They have two blue and one gray card and uh, leaving spaces with one unit is dangerous because if the Greeks eliminate those last units in each one of those spaces that's one morale point uh, that will be either gained by the Greeks or lost by the Ottomans. So the Ottomans will play this card Leonidas but for action points because this is a blue or Greek event so this will give the uh, Ottomans two action points and they will use them to move units back into uh, positions near the wall. So with each action point, uh, two units can move one space. So this unit will move into this space as well as this unit here will move back here. And with the action point left, uh, one unit can move two spaces. So this unit back here in this row will move here. And that's the end of this uh, card play. It's the Greeks' turn. They only have red cards left, meaning that if they're played, it's only for the action points. And uh, the Ottoman player, in its next step, may play the event by discarding a card. So uh, this is not a good prospect. However... Because the last card that the Ottomans played was a blue card for the action points, the Greeks now can discard one of these red cards to trigger the event in Leonidas. And that's what they will do. And uh, the Greeks will discard this card, Ricard, which has a devastating effect on the walls, uh, in order to play the Leonidas event. And the Leonidas event increases support at C by 1 and adds 1 supply point. So support is increased by 1 and that means another Greek support marker at that important C tile. The Greeks receive 1 supply point and now they have 11. And now it's the last round of card play for this turn and the Ottomans will play this card for its action points and it will be used to attack uh, Greek units on the wall. In this game each action point allows one unit to attack so conceivably with three action points the Ottomans could uh, have three attacks, one by each one of those units, and each one of those attacks would uh, be uh, effected by rolling two eight-sided dice, and when attacking a unit on the wall, which is not a fort, uh, an eight is needed in order to cause a hit. And uh, so, in this case, uh, the Ottomans would end up rolling six eight-sided dice, uh, with the hopes of scoring an 8. Now there's another way in which the odds of an attack can be increased and that is by conducting um, a rewarded attack action and that co would cost one action point and one money and in that case any other attacks would get a plus one modifier and that's what the Ottomans will do. So the Ottomans spend one money 
So they have uh, five left. The Ottomans have two action points left. The first of those two will be used for this unit to attack this walled space. And eight or more is needed, but there's a plus one die roll modifier for the rewarded attack action that preceded it. So we roll one d8. The result is an 8 modified to a 9. That's a hit, and the Greek unit is eliminated. Now the Ottomans still have one action point left, and movement onto walls can only be uh, executed in this game by an action known as slow movement, and that costs one action point and allows one unit to move onto a wall. So the Ottomans will move this unit onto the recently uh, cleared wall space. So the Ottomans have a wall space under their control, and because they eliminated the last Greek unit from a space, they either gain a morale point or they cause the Greeks to lose one morale point. And in this case, they will reduce Greek morale by one, so it goes down to 11. So now it's the Greeks' turn to play the last card of this round, and the choices are not very encouraging because they're red cards can only play them for action points and uh, you may think well but it's the last round the uh, Ottomans won't be able to uh, discard a card to affect the event here well in this game there is a special rule that in the last action round if a player plays a card for its action points and it's an opposing cards event uh, the other player has uh, an opportunity to play the last card in his hand in order to affect the event by discarding it. So, the Greeks need all the action points they can get. And they'll play this card for its action points. So it's three action points. First action point will be used for this unit to attack here. And uh, attack on adjacent wall spaces are successful uh, from another wall space with five or more with an eight-sided die. So we roll 1d8, and the result is a seven. So that eliminates the Ottoman unit from uh, the wall space. And the Greeks have two action points left, and the only way the Greeks can move uh, units around is through the regroup action, and one action point is spent to move a Greek unit from anywhere in the island spaces or the city spaces uh, between such spaces. So the Greeks will regroup. The uh, unit in Klisova will be placed in the recently cleared wall space. And the Greeks still have one action point left. And the Greeks will use their last remaining action point to conduct a raid. And a raid costs uh, the number of action points, uh, which is equal to the distance of the target space. So the Greeks will conduct a raid from this space to this space here, which is one space away. So that costs one action point. And the Greeks roll one eight-sided die, any result of five or more is a hit. So we roll 1d8. The result is a three, so the raid failed and caused no losses. And that's the end of uh, the Greek round. Now, we saw that they played a card which has a red or imperial player event. And by special rule, the imperial player can now discard the last card that they have in their hand, which is actually a blue or Greek event card, for the purpose of uh, playing the event in the last card played by the Greeks, and they will do so. So now this event comes into play, Aqueduct, Canal Destruction, and two supplies are lost by the insurgent Greeks. So we remove uh, two supplies, from the Greeks, and they still have nine left. And that's the end of the actions phase, and now we move to the cannon phase, where each side can fire their cannons once, starting with the imperial side. 
The Ottomans only have two cannon units. Uh, one of them was destroyed in the last turn. They have one which is three spaces away from the wall and this one which is two spaces away from the wall. Now, the to hit uh, number is dependent on the distance of the target. When it is three spaces, only six is hit on a six-sided die. When it is two spaces away, fives and six is hit. So we roll first for this uh, cannon here and it will attack this walled space which is also a fortification space. It rolls two six-sided dice and uh, sixes are needed for hits. So we roll 2d6 and the results are 2-1 so not even close. Now the remaining uh, cannon this unit here will fire at this space here, another fortified space. This one is two spaces away, so fives and sixes hit. We roll 2d6. And this time two fives, so the first hit damages the wall. And we would signify this by placing a marker on its damaged side. And the second hit destroys the wall, so we flip that marker to the side showing the destroyed wall symbol. Now what's the effect of all this? Uh, normally wall spaces are hit with eight or more but there is a minus one modifier if there's a fort in that space meaning that with nothing more uh, you can't even attack these spaces unless you have positive die roll modifiers. Now in this particular case uh, the wall is not just damaged it is destroyed. There's a plus two die roll modifier so in a future turn the Imperial player could attack this space and uh, it would have a net plus one die roll modifier that is plus two for the destroyed wall status and minus one because there's a fort there and that means that with sevens and eights uh, it would hit units in that space. Now the Greeks have an action by which they can reconstruct walls. But repairing walls is costly. It's four action points to fix one level. So to go from destroyed to damage, it's four action points. So um, destroying and damaging walls is a very important aspect of this game in order to offset the uh, obvious advantage that the Greeks have in their fortifications and walls. So it's the Greeks' turn to fire their cannons. They have four of them including the bombard and they'll start with this one here. This unit will fire at this space. The space is adjacent so it's uh, the hit number is four or more with uh, two six-sided dice. Cannons always fire with two six-sided dice so we roll two d6. The roll is a three and a six. One hit so one imperial unit is eliminated. Now the Greeks go to the next cannon to the right and that one is here in a fort. And this cannon will fire at these units here, two spaces away. So the hit number is five or more. And uh, we roll two d6, a four and a six, so one unit is eliminated. Now we move on to the bombard which is a special uh, cannon that the Greeks have here. Uh, this unit fires as any other cannon, 2d6s, but it has a plus one die roll modifier. The bombard will fire at this space here, two spaces away, five or more. We roll 2d6s, but there's a plus one die roll modifier. The roll is a 2, which is modified to a 3, that misses, but the 4 is modified to a 5, and that's a hit. So we eliminate one unit. Finally, the Greeks have one more artillery or cannon unit to fire, which is this one here, also in a fort space. And here it's important to note that cannons have a range of three spaces, but the range goes this way. For example, this would be range 1 could fire here at range 2 and it could fire here at range 3 so it can choose between these two spaces 
and uh, the artillery unit or the cannon unit will fire here at the space with the three units it's 2d6 but only sixes will hit we roll 2d6 a three and a one and that's misses on both counts so that is the end of the cannons phase now we proceed to the replenishment phase which is the last phase of this turn and we begin by the imperial player checking which areas are under his control on the surrounding areas map the imperial player still has control of the four areas that he started the game with and each one of these provides certain rewards let's take a look at them Guria provides one supply point as signified here by the bread loaf symbol and the other three spaces under imperial control provide three four five additional supply points so the Ottomans will receive six supply points and two units and one cannon so we add six supply points to the ten that the Imperials already have and now they have sixteen and we also add two units and a cannon to the Imperials camp space now they have nine units there and two cannons next during this phase the Imperial side has to pay for uh, its mercenary troops and during rounds one to three and we're in round two um, four money units must be paid so now we remove four and the Imperial player only has one money left so in this game, if the uh, Ottomans run out of money during the replenishment phase, for each unit of money they cannot satisfy, they would lose one unit. However, there's an action that we didn't show uh, called plea for funds from the high port by which the Ottomans can request funding during each turn and depending on a die roll, they may receive funding repeatedly during each turn. So that's another action they can undertake to avoid uh, the consequences of running out of money. Now we reduce supply for the Ottomans during period A, which is rounds one to three, and we're in round two. We reduce supplies by eight points. And now they have eight points left. And now we go to the Greek part of the replenishment phase, and we start by counting units and civilians and adjusting the population track accordingly and the Greeks have 13 units and 8 civilian cubes for a total of 21 and the population marker is now placed in the 21 to 25 population points box that means that it will cause 5 supply points to be uh, consumed now we check for rewards received by the insurgents as a result of control of surrounding areas. For Petalas, they will receive one supply point. For Anatolicon, they will receive uh, an increase of one in morale. And here we see for Zygos, one military unit. And finally, for control of the sea, two supply units. So, uh, as a total reward, as to supplies, it's three additional supply units. And now the Greeks have 12. Morale, which is at 11, is now increased by 1. And is now at 12. And the new army that the uh, insurgents will receive will be placed in this space here. Now supply points must be deducted based on the uh, population and the population track tells us that five supply points must be spent now. So we remove five supply points and the insurgents have seven remaining. Now the insurgents check to see if uh, their plea for help from the government is successful. We rolled 2d6 and we need 12 or higher and uh, 
a modifier exist for each point here on this track that uh, we've spent already action points before, but we didn't spend any, so uh, they need to roll a double six. And the roll is a six, so no help from the government this turn. And the marker is moved one box forward. So in the next turn, if no action points are used to increase the points there, at least a plus one will be um, assessed when rolling again for government help. And if the government uh, would have sent anything, it would have been six supplies and two more units, and that would have been just a one-shot deal, meaning that the uh, insurgents do not receive any more government aid in the game. Notice that this game has six rounds, and in rounds four to six, you use the Twilight of Freedom cards, and the Ottomans receive the Egyptian Allied Army, which is represented by the green cubes. So that's the end of this turn and the end of this video. I didn't go for the best possible strategies, but I wanted to focus on the basic mechanics of play and things you can expect to happen in the game. So this is Freedom, designed by Vangelis Bagiartakis, an upcoming Kickstarter campaign beginning on March 25th and to be published by Phalanx Games. So I hope that this video has given you a good idea of the flow of the game and what the game has to offer. This is Stuka Joe, signing off for now. Thanks for watching.